Thursdays always bring us our Hometown Hero Show. Mark Allen's Hometown Hero is brought to you by Roxbury Truck Repair, the Thief Over Falls Regional Airport, and Phillips Iron and Metal. Our guest today is Reed Freuland. Reed, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good to have you in on a little bit of a break uh, yes. For a few days, right? For me, uh, in the middle of the break between school and church, a little bit of a break here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is, uh, of course, the holidays. And uh, you have a good Christmas? Yes, yes. Busy. Right. It, when, when you're a church organist, you're, you're busy on the holidays. But yeah. uh, it's nice to be able to break. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, we first off want to learn a little bit about Reed. So uh, we know you're a hometown boy, but tell the folks a little bit about where you're born and raised. Well, I was born here in Thief River, raised here in Thief River, a 1997 graduate of Lincoln High School. Uh, went off to Concordia College in Moorhead, go Cobbers, to get my math ed and computer science degrees, and then taught math in Crookston for five years, came back here in 2006 to teach math at Lincoln High School, and have been back since. And uh, when you went off to t- uh, teach or get ready to teach, and uh, were you hoping to come back home? At some point, um, I didn't know that I wanted to right away. I didn't know really even going into the first year of teaching if teaching was ultimately what I should be doing. That's why I had the computer science degree as a fallback plan in case the classroom didn't work out. Well, we're, I'm in my 19th year. I, if it hasn't worked out by now, um, I, then no one's told me. <laughs> uh, what, what made you go into teaching? What, what kind of uh, you know, drew you towards that career? I enjoyed mathematics a great deal. Um, I enjoyed the breadth of activities in, in, a, in a high school and had people over the course of my college experience say, you know, you're really good at explaining this. You're really good at explaining this. I didn't think I was good at explaining it, but <laughs> um, sometimes you have to listen to what other people see that you may not see. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so and, I figured, well, I might as well try it. And, and as a teacher, you need to be able to explain it well, oh, don't yeah. you? Uh, with kids. Um Family. Tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, my parents, Barry and Susan Froyland. Barry was the MIS director for the city of Thief River for 41 years. Uh, Susan was an elementary teacher for 41 years, most of her career in the Thief River Falls Public Schools. Um, I have three siblings. My brother Taylor is a pharmacist in Arizona. My brother Dane is one of the choir directors at Kennedy Secondary School in Fergus Falls. And my sister Mara works in town for the city of Thief River. All right. So uh, I've been, it's a fairly big family yet, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. Did you get together with a lot of them on the holidays? Yeah, everyone was up except Taylor. Okay. A little, a little tougher to get up from Arizona, but... Mm. All right. So you, you get into teaching, uh, but that's not the only thing you do. You, you mentioned uh, playing the organ, uh, which is almost a lost art. Uh, we don't have a lot of organ players. There aren't many in the upper Midwest in particular. It seems that the decline in church organists that started to hit the coasts 20 years ago has finally made its way to the Midwest, much as any trend seems to in this country. It starts on the coasts and 20 years later, it gets to us up here in the in the in the tundra. Um, But I am the organist and liturgist and choir director at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Thief River Falls. And how long have you been there? I've been at Redeemer now just over 10 years. Okay. Um, Do you play piano and and organ? Piano and organ. Also play trombone and I'm active in the Northland Community Band and the Northern Jazz, president of the... The supporting organization for the bands. Yeah, and that's uh, you guys do a you, you play a number of uh, venues, don't you? Oh yes, we the community band has traditional fall and spring concerts at Northland, as well as some summer performances in the community. The Northern Jazz will have its winter merriment performance at the end of February, beginning of March, in that general time frame each year at Northland, as well as performances as festivals around. We're at Goose Fest every year, it seems, mm-hmm. and it's a wonderful performance up there. Oh, they love you um, up there, yeah. along with several other festivals and occasionally will show up at the VFW, too. <laughs> now, is this just a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of people that, that played either in high school or college or whatever that still want to continue that, yes. that, that playing, right? Yes, it's, there are some professional musicians in there who play their instrument for pay um, or are music teachers, but um, otherwise it's just people who want to keep playing yeah, and providing that, that music. Enjoy it. And this is one, one way to continue to do that, isn't it? Yes. I joke with my students that if I didn't have band, um, their tests would be harder because I would have to relieve my stress in some <laughs> other way. 
um, I want to I come back to the organ thing again. I just think it's cool because um, uh, Barb Gear uh, yes. played organ up there in in our church in Middle River and brought it in. And, and with the fact that hoping that somebody would take it on, there's not a lot of people that will do it. A lot of them are older ones, so it's nice to see a, a young man that that. That has the interest of, of keeping an organ playing going. The, the the highlight for me isn't the literature. It isn't playing the preludes and the offertories and the postludes and those pieces, though the, they're wonderful fun to learn and play, I will admit. But it's leading people in singing. That's the highlight for me, being able to accompany them with different colors of sound on the organ to help the highlight what they're singing in the service and hopefully add to that meaning. Do That's have, the highlight for me. Do you have any uh, students or, or younger people that, or even older people that are looking at you that, that want to learn it? There are a few people, a few students at Franklin and Lincoln that are wanting to learn. The challenge for me is finding the time to give lessons yeah. properly. Yeah, I suppose. And also since I don't have a degree in music, I did take organ lessons in college and music has just been um, a very deep area of interest for me, but making sure that if I'm doing the teaching of organ that I do it right too, that takes a little time to figure out along with the time for lessons. So, so. what do you enjoy more playing music or doing math? Um, <laughs> if I just enjoy it. it. I just enjoy it. Both, that's, huh? that, that's the best way I can say it. It's all good. It's all a part of who I am and, there's, I don't really enjoy it any less. Each has its different aspects that are highlights. I, 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 sh- I want to ask you if you have any hobbies, but I don't. I know you have little time because you're so busy with other things. But do you have some kind of hobbies? Music is a hobby, Music? really, truly. Yeah. And so, in the summer, I'm out in my yard. Okay, yard, in the yard garden. work, yard yes. work. Okay, the so there you go. You got something other than your your <clears> work. <throat> Uh, We're going to talk more uh, with Reed Froyland in just a moment. Uh, He's our guest on Hometown Heroes today. It's brought to you by Roxbury Truck Repair. Of course, a truck shop with truck and trailer maintenance and repair. It's Roxbury Truck Repair. The Thief Over Falls Regional Airport with hassle-free security and free parking. Be sure to check out the benefits of flying local. The Thief Over Falls Regional Airport, your front door to the rest of the world. And, of course, Phillips Iron and Metal. They accept all ferrous and non-ferrous metals, including but not limited to stainless steel, copper, brass, aluminum, lead, insulated wire, nickel, high-temp alloys, precious metals, etc. Whether you bring the materials to us or we bring us to you, we provide quality service at competitive pricing. That's Phillips Iron and Metal. Our guest today is uh, Reed Froyland uh, here in uh, Thief River Falls. Reed is uh, a, a teacher and uh, a volunteer, too, because you, you do a lot of volunteering with uh, whether that's through the church or whatnot. Uh, we talk a little bit about hobbies, but, you know, if you're if you're not teaching and, uh, you know, do you, do you find much time for other things? And, and if so, How? <laughs> Um, I am active in the Thief River Falls Concert Association as well, treasurer of the uh, association, so I help with that. Otherwise, church and music and really school does take up a lot of time. I am one of the stage managers for the Lincoln High School Auditorium. Uh, I coach the Lincoln High School Math League team as well, and I know you've seen me at plenty of athletic events around, uh, helping to make those go as smoothly as they can for our students, in addition to a very full class load this year i have uh, next semester i have two sections of geometry as well as calculus one and advanced placement calculus two this semester i've i teach math ten eleven, which is a supplemental course for students who are having some difficulties or need some confidence building to problem solve better as well as uh, pre-calculus and advanced placement statistics we have a diverse course load at lincoln and I kind of mop up what's left in the department. <laughs> did did the, did the math league when that started? Did that help draw a little more interest for kids? It did um, in its initial years when John Wahlberg, though no, that's a blast from the past for the Forever Falls students, when he started the math league team back in the late eighties, early nineties, and then uh, it 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 slipped in numbers for a while. It maybe not in overall numbers. Before I came back, we'd have 30 to 40 on the math league roster, but many would only go to one of the five meets in the season. Uh, now we've been averaging the thir- the 13 years I've been coaching. We've been averaging 25 on the roster that are going to each meet uh, this year. We only have 22 last year. We had 36 just varies by year, but we have more in a small school and really in Northwest Minnesota in the small schools than some of the big schools do. Shakopee couldn't field a team this year. Yet Badger 
has 20 some on the roster and Greenbush Middle River has 15 to 20 on the roster and Thief River has 20 some on the roster. So the small schools up here seem to get the involvement that the big schools are struggling with for some reason. And I'm not sure why I'm also on the state math league board. So I get to hear what goes on around the state. And I, I, we tend to do things well up here in Northwest Minnesota. I I always get a kick out of uh, <clears throat> you know, think about a math is is it something that's that enjoyable? But for some people, it really is, isn't it? And learning how to problem solve in mathematics transfers in so many ways to problem solving in other areas. Being right. able to identify what the crux of the problem is, figure out strategies to attack it, try those strategies, and then in bring in other strategies to continue attacking the problem. Yeah. It's it's just so transferable. And then making well reasoned arguments that this is how I know this is true and this is why it is true. Not necessarily the two column proofs that many of us remember and quite frankly hated in geometry, (laughs) um, but uh, being able to write a paragraph proof. I know that this happens because of this and then this happens because of this and so on. That applies in just about every aspect of life. Yeah, And and some of these kids really enjoy uh, working it, thinking about it and and coming up with the answers. Yes. All right. Um, are there other goals for Reed Froyman? <clears throat> Any other things that you're looking at? Uh, this is what I want to do in the next five years, 10 years. I am quite happy with what I am doing and just aim to get better at it each day. Um, I'm working very slowly on some classes that the Northwest Service Co-op and Minnesota State University Moorhead are offering to get more people certified to teach college in the high school. I do have my master's degree in curriculum development, but because it's not in mathematics, I am unable to teach college and the high school courses. So that would give us another option besides the advanced placement courses for college credit. Otherwise, I just want to keep doing the teaching thing as well as I possibly can. We just switched books this year back to a series that um, I particularly enjoyed and we felt as a department we had some success with 12 years ago. And I just want to get better at that. It seems that there's there still is a shortage of teachers out there. Yes. Uh, so as as somebody who's uh, established themselves now in the teaching world, uh, could you give some advice to, to youngsters, maybe juniors, seniors that might be looking at going into teaching? It is going to be hard work. You will work extremely hard, not just your first few years as you're trying to establish yourself, but every year as you try to get better. And you will have to deal with a lot of political crap. Um, because ultimately many of the decisions that we have to deal with in education are made by people who are not familiar with the education world, some of whom might even be proud to say, well, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express once, so I know what's going on. Um, example, at the state level for the teacher licensing system, the the state IT department said we need X number of months to... Um, to get the new licensing system developed. Well, the chair of the committee that kept hearing that went into their offices, saw their computers were on and said, you have three months. So many of the decisions you make as a teacher are not dictated by those in the district in which you teach. Yet it is still wonderfully rewarding to see students eyes light up, to see people who have struggled for years with a particular subject, a particular type of problem, a particular area of education come to understand it. And that's where even with all that goes on that we end up having to deal with in the schools related to society and mental health issues and decisions made by bureaucrats and all of that, remembering what's important is what keeps us going. The kids. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, see yes. Them move through. Yeah, no doubt. Reed, thanks so much for uh, for stopping in today. We appreciate you coming in and visiting with well, us. Thank you for the invitation, Mark. This it was, was a pleasure. Good to uh, get some folks to know you, too. Reed, have a, a good rest of the holiday. You as well. All right. Our guest today on Hometown Heroes, Reed Froyland. Our uh, Hometown Heroes show brought to you by Roxbury Truck Repair, the Thief River Falls Regional Airport, and by Phillips Iron and Metal.